Hi there, everybody. Professor Tomney here back with another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lesson, we are going to take a look at the IUPAC rules for naming alkene functional groups, which are going to be carbon carbon double bond functional groups when you find that pi bond between the two carbons. So that is going to be coming up on the channel right now. Okay, so before I get started here, I just want to remind people that you can head on over to chemcomplete.com for lots of free learning resources. We also have an IUPAC naming guide for alkanes, which is going to be very similar to alkenes here. That is the basis for all IUPAC naming. It is extremely affordable to pick up, only a couple of dollars, and it really supports the channel. So if you found this useful or you're struggling with alkane naming and other functional group naming, check out that guide because it could really be helpful. All right, so on to IUPAC naming of alkenes. So you can see the first statement here, which is why I just mentioned what I did. The rules for naming alkenes are going to be very similar to the IUPAC rules for naming alkanes. So alkanes are just your regular saturated hydrocarbons, and then alkenes are going to be the carbon-carbon double bond that's present. If you are not familiar with how to name alkanes, I would suggest that you learn how to do that first before proceeding forward, because it's not just going to affect naming alkenes, but it is going to affect all of your IUPAC naming throughout your entire organic chemistry course. If you would like some free resources on the Chem Complete YouTube channel, there is an entire free course on IUPAC naming. And I will leave the link down in the description box below for that entire playlist so that you can check that out if you would like. Now, how is this going to differ from alkane naming? You're going to have double bonds that are now present. They will get the priority during numbering. So when we were looking at regular alkanes, you would look at all the different substituents and then you would give the lowest possible set of numbers that you could. Once we have double bonds present, they will be prioritized with the numbering. So even if you have methyl groups or ethyl groups or t-butyl groups, their priority will be lower relative to the numbering of the alkene or the double bond. And then the suffix is going to become ene, E-N-E. -E. So where we would normally have something like hexane, we will have hexene instead. So you're going to change that suffix to E-N-E. -E. Now, the rules, as they would be, are going to be, number one, find the longest carbon chain, which we often call the parent chain, that contains all double bonds. So this was something that was similar to our alkane naming. However, we have to make sure that we prioritize double bonds being present here. And it has to be all carbons that contain the double bond, not just one of them. So if you take a look at this example right here, you would want to make sure that as you are finding the longest chain, it has to include the double bond. So if I were to look at this as the longest chain, because I can count a total of six, that would not be acceptable. Because if I look at that, one of the carbons, this one here, is not included in that chain. And so that would not be a way that I could identify the parent chain for this particular compound. What I would need to do is make sure I include both carbons that are involved in the double bond, and then I could either take the top or the bottom path. The bottom path has more carbon, so it will be the longest carbon chain, and there you go. That would be the longest carbon chain there. So this would be a pentene, and we'll get a little bit further into the naming structure as far as numbering and everything else in a minute here, okay? But it's important to realize this would not be a hexene because that first count that we tried with six did not include both double bonds. So this is a pentene, not a hexene. All right, rule number two is that you need to number the carbon atoms in the parent chain, give the lowest possible number to carbons involved in the double bonds. So again, with regular IUPAC naming of alkanes or your base rules, 
uh, you would still have to be numbering, but we're just giving the lowest set to all substituents. Here we're prioritizing the double bond. So it should be obvious which way we want to number this here, but we will just show both ways. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, or, and we'll do this in a uh, different color here, I could do one, right, and go back the other way because there is no uh, forcing of going left to right the way that we would read as long as you are maintaining the parent chain. So the blue method is the clear winner in this case because it would deliver a two and a three as the numbers that would be associated with the alkene. Whereas the red method that we were using would give a four, five numbering system, right? And if you're looking for where those numbers are coming from, look at the two carbons involved in the double bond and the numbers associated with them. So the lowest possible number set goes to the carbons involved in the double bond. And that is rule number two. So then rule number three, once we have our numbering in place, we want to actually get ready to name the compound. And a couple reminders here, when we're writing IUPAC names, we're going to list all of the numbered substituents alphabetically. It is not by number, it is alphabetically. So if I have an ethyl and a methyl, the E in ethyl gets listed first, even if the number on the ethyl is higher. So let's say I had a compound that had a 4-ethyl and a 2-methyl. Even though the 2 is a lower number, we write 4-ethyl because of the E. That comes first. So alphabetically for all of those substituents. Then, after you have listed all of your substituents alphabetically with their associated numbers, you will indicate the lowest of the two numbers involved in the double bond immediately before naming the parent chain. And again, you want to use en as the suffix for this parent name. So. If multiple double bonds are present, which is certainly possible, the parent chain needs to include all of those double bonds. Again, if possible, you're not allowed to go back and recount over the same carbons. You would have to then find the longest chain that contains the most double bonds possible. Okay, but then you would also provide a number for each double bond with the lowest number involved for each of those double bonds. And then you would need to end with the correct uh, prefix for your suffix, which I know is kind of like, what are you talking about? But diene, triene, tetraene, um, any of those, and so on. So here are some examples. As usual, I'm going to encourage you to try to pause the video and work these out yourself if you can. So the first two examples that we have here, you can take a pause, write them down, and see if you can solve them. That second example down there was actually the very first compound we were looking at going over rule one. So pause the video, give these a shot, and see if you were able to come up with the answers. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to do that. So the numbering that we would see here, we could go left to right or right to left, it would both catch those double bonds and it would give us a three, four either way. So then the question is, which way should I go? I should go left to right because I still want to give the lowest number possible to that methyl group that's hanging out right down here and going left to right would do that. So because I have three, four this way and I would also have three, four going right to left, the alkene doesn't really matter in this case. I am then going to prioritize that this methyl gets a two after the alkene has been accounted for. So this would be the numbering system that I would have. And the correct answer here would be 2-methyl, because I list my substituents first outside of the alkene. That's the only substituent besides the double bond. So then I look the lower of the two numbers involved in the double bond. So here's the double bond itself. It's a 3 and a 4. So it would be 3 and then hexene as the correct name. Okay, now for this other one that we had here, again, we have to include both carbons involved in the double bond, and this time it's very evident we need to go from right to left. We need one and two, because those are the lowest numbers possible for that double bond, and then I can have a three, four, and a five here. So that's going to leave this ethyl group as a substituent in position two. So let's go ahead and list that first. We're going to write two ethyl. And then once we're done with the ethyl, 
it's going to be one because the very first carbon is already involved in a double bond there and it's a total of five so as we mentioned earlier in this video this would be a pentene so here are three additional examples and these three we will kind of wrap up the video with so take a look at these and again pause the video see if you're able to figure them out and then come back for the walkthrough okay so hopefully you had a chance to do that we're going to take a look at this one up here that has the double set of double bonds so we're going to have some sort of a diene that we need to deal with so similar to that first problem that we worked through we're going to look at this methyl group here and prioritize it because i would get a one two and a three four or a one two and a three four so as far as numbering the alkene it doesn't matter but that methyl group we would prefer that it have the number two instead of three so the correct numbering that we're going to use here will be one two three four okay so two methyl and now we're going to need two numbers because we've got two double bonds so it would be one comma three because here we are with the first double bond and here we are with the second double bond so it's one three and the total parent chain has four so it would be a butane in nature but i'm going to cut off the ane part and do buta diene because i have two of those double bonds going down to the next we are now looking at cyclic systems so the big key here is that i have to remember to add cyclo to the parent name when i am working with it so i need to still prioritize the double bond i could do one two three four or i could do one two three four five over here now in order to do this i want to give the lowest possible number set that i could to these and it's going to be a one two three four five because i can also get a one for that ethyl which is going to be better than having a two for it so when i get ready to name this it's going to be one ethyl and then five methyl again alphabetically and then if i take a look at the ring i'm going to have a cyclopentene okay and there we are now you're going to note that there is no number in front of the cyclopentene why is that because the rule rule number two says that we prioritize the alkene bond in a cyclic system you do not have a start or end to the chain so if you only have a single double bond by default it must be position one so you do not need to put a one here in front of the cyclopentene because again it's already inherent to the ring now if i have two as i do in the next example here i do need the numbers because we have to talk about the spacing that they share to one another right a one four would be different than a one three but you can certainly expect that of the two numbers one of them will be the number one because we have to have some initiation point so in a case like this it doesn't really matter i'll just go ahead and do it this way here's one two three four five six now when i say it doesn't matter what i meant was that i could start with one where the five is and go two three and then i'd still be at four and five so it's symmetrical around the ring and the correct name here is going to be one comma four because that would be the lower number sets that begin each of these alkene double bonds and then the parent name it is cyclic so i want to make sure i include cyclo it is a six membered ring so i would include hexa and there are two double bonds so i would include diene one for cyclohexadiene is the name of this compound all right so hopefully that helps to uh teach 
the way that we approach the IUPAC naming for alkenes, a lot of the same rules still apply, but there's a lot of focus now on those double bonds and some of the suffix naming is going to end at the very end of the parent chain. So one more shout out to chemcomplete.com. Lots of IUPAC resources over there, both free and very affordable paid for. If you'd like to support the channel and you found this helpful, you can thumbs up the video and likes always help promote our work in the algorithm. If you comment, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, stay subscribed to stay up to date during your semester and your studies. Thank you so much for learning with Chem Complete, and I will see everybody in the next lecture.